At this point, we simply can conclude that love is at the center because love is at the center of God and the center of what humans are called for. And what humans are called for and to is love relationship through covenant. At this point, we can stop for a minute and step back and say, okay, so God seems to have covenant at the center of his plan for humanity. Covenant with him, covenant with each other. But what is covenant? We have to have a definition to work with for the rest of our sessions together. I'd wonder, what, what, what comes to your mind when you think about covenant? What sort of synonyms or uh, ideas or pictures in your head sort of come to your mind when you, when you hear the idea of covenant? I've asked a lot of people that question over the years. I often get comments like this. Um, agreement. Or um, a ritual. Some kind of ritual. Others will say, uh, well, it's, it's like a contract. We'll be talking again later about the difference between contract and covenant. And there is a very important difference. But it is true that some of the elements of covenant look very much like some of the elements of contract. I'll often have someone say, a promise. At that point I say, amen. Because at the heart of every covenant is a promise. So all these things are involved in one way or another with, with covenant. But here's the definition that I'd like to propose we use for this, this class. It's a long definition. It's going to have a number of elements to it. We'll be unpacking all of them. But here it is. When I think covenant, I think a committed, community-based, kinship-forming. The word kinship there is a, a technical term for family. It's one that sociologists and anthropologists often use. We'll be using the word kinship quite a bit in this course. A committed, community-based, Kinship creating, creates family. Agape love relationship. That's going to be our core definition. A committed, community-based, kinship creating, agape love relationship. Now this relationship can be between two or more parties. It, it's expressed in specific terms. People know what the relationship is. It's clear. It's grounded in promises. Promise is so central to covenant. It's grounded in promises of faith and faithfulness. Two terms that come out of the covenant context that we'll be talking more about later. This promise, this covenant promise of faith and faithfulness is sealed with an oath or an oath sign. Two terms, again, we'll be unpacking. And what all this is for? What's the purpose of all this? Well, all of this, this relationship that's, that's sealed with a promise of faith and faithfulness, that's promised before God with an oath, all of this provides the blessings of life and family. It produces what comes with the gift of family. And what comes with family, of course, is everything from identity and belonging, to community and trust, to safety and loyalty, to purpose and calling, to legacy, to destiny. All of these things, when you think about it, are wrapped up in what family gives to human beings. Identity, purpose, calling, safety, loyalty, community, legacy and destiny. You know, it's interesting, for almost every human culture, there's family, which sort of structures the center of communities. But then when non-family members start to get close to each other, let's say a friend, or some, some, some non-family member that starts to become, what well, would almost say, part of the family, right? We start to use family language for people who aren't technically biological family in order to express closeness. You got a good friend, and after a while you find that you're saying to each other, hey bro, right? Brother being a term of closeness. 
Or you'll talk to some about your friend and you might say, she's like a sister to me. I know my mom who came from Canada, man, I couldn't believe all the aunts she had. And I find out when I was old enough to learn about these things that most of the people she called auntie so-and-so weren't actually biological aunts or in-law aunts. They were just people, close friends of the family, that were given the special name of aunt because of the close relationship. It's like their family. You've probably heard someone say, ah, they're like a second mom or a second dad to me, right? All these ways we use family language to signal when people who aren't technically biological to us are nonetheless very much part of our inner circle of identity and community. Family just does that. Well, here's the thing. There's only two ways into family. Blood, what we'd call biology or genetically related people, and covenant. People who through promise or connected relationship and commitment just become family to us. Two ways to become family, blood and covenant. And that's what a lot of this, this course is about, is about the families that God is calling into being. The family of God, the church. The families that might be family of friendship or family of a marriage. Two people who aren't related by blood, but because of one simple promise in a wedding ceremony, literally become one flesh. Family. God is all about covenant because he's all about bringing people into familyed existence. There's no place for aloneness in the kingdom of God. Different kinds of families, different kinds of covenants, but all of us have a place, a belonging, of identity and purpose and calling and safety in community and destiny because of the covenantal love of God.